working on some topics in algebraic topology and algebraic geometry. Uh, so for, for today, I'll start on the algebraic topology side of things. Uh, I'll start with this school theorem of thought, thought periodicity. Uh, uh, so that, that says that if I let u be uh, the infinite unitary group, so that means uh, the direct limit of all the n by n unitary groups as along the natural transition maps. Then, so that's some, these are each some topological group. This is some topological group and bot com computed the, the homotopy groups of that. So the nth homotopy group is uh, z if n is odd and zero if n is even. There's a kind of periodicity. Um, my title has evenness and not oddness in the. So I'm going to massage this a little bit. So I'm going to take classifying spaces um, by putting a B everywhere. So B U N. Uh, so that's a general thing you can do to a topological group. B U N is a classifying space for n-dimensional complex vector bundles. I'll say a little bit more about B U in a second. But uh, so when you do this on the classifying spaces, things just get shifted by one. So. Uh, the homotopy group is uh, z when n is even and positive, and uh, uh, zero when n is odd. Um, so that's Bob's theorem. And uh, so it, let me say something about what this space is. It, this this tells you something about um, it turns out complex K theory. So let me remind you that if uh, x is a compact Hausdorff space, say then I can associate to it something that I'll write as KU zero of X. Um, that's what I get when I start with a set of isomorphism classes of complex vector bundles. And uh, so that's a, that has an addition operation given by direct sum and um, I can group complete it. So I can formally add additive inverses to, to that monoid. And um, this is, uh, that's what the complex case group of, the, of this space is. And it's also um, can be written as it's the set of homotopy classes of maps from this space into something closely related to B, but it's B times B. So this space is basically a representing space for complex case theory. Um, and this, this theorem about the space, it buys you something about this group. Uh, so by, um, why is that this extends to uh, uh, cohomology in the sense of algebraic topology, uh, KU star. So that means it's it's some invariant which assigns a graded abelian group to every space. Um, and in this case, what's happening is that uh, KU uh, n of the space is it's either it's either this thing, which is basically uh, yeah. So it's this thing like. Uh, Having to do with complex vector bundles um, in the even case, and then it has to do with maps from X into just the unitary group that I started with in the, in the odd case. So it's um, it's a two periodic theory, and that's coming from the two periodicity in, in Boss there. Okay, and uh, this is not just so the fact that this extends to a cohomology theory. It's sort of it it's something it gives you a tool to to sort of calculate these groups. So. When you have such a cohomology theory, there is this thing called a, so in the situation, there's something called a spectral sequence. Let me just write this signature of this object. It's, it's something that starts with uh, um, a bunch of ordinary cohomology groups. So this is just the usual singular cohomology of the, spa of the space. It's some, it's some tool that starts with this information and ends up at um, this K, these K theory groups. Okay, and the, the basic idea, this is, if, you don't, if you're not friends with spectral sequences, then uh, you're not alone. And um, you can just think of this as some tool for computing this side from, from this side. And uh, maybe one way to think about how it co comes about is if you think about X being something like a manifold, then it's covered locally by contractible spaces. And um, Bot's theorem is telling you what K-theory looks like on all those contractible spaces. And this is some kind of local to global tool uh, for computing K-theory of the, of the whole thing. And um, okay, so that's uh, that's some classical thing in uh, in algebraic topology. Okay, so I'll move to the algebra geometric setting now. And um, there's an analog of this type of construction. If if R is a commutative ring, 
then I can associate it to it to something. It's, it's called its K0 of R. It's very similar. Um, I'll start with isoclasses of uh, finitely generated predictive uh, R models. And do the same group completion construction, which is analog of vector bundles in the, in the algebraic setting. That's an analog of K0. And then there's also uh, other K groups in this setting as well. And the definition is um, omitted. Uh, yeah, so let me not say anything about that, but it, it, it took a lot of work. And um, so it's, uh, there, there are these other K groups, which are in some sense uh, similar to this, but in many ways, not similar to the, in, to the topological setting. For example, they're not periodic in general at all. And it's much more challenging to compute them. And for that, for that reason in particular, it's occupied um, a lot of people's attention. So let me give an example of, or illustrating the challenging nature of this thing. So one case where it is understood is that, uh, so a very simple ring is um, a finite field of P elements, so Z mod P. And this thing was computed um, by Cullen. So these groups are completely understood. There's a, uh, there's a formula for them in uh, 1972, shortly after he defined these groups. Whereas um, the K groups of Z mod four are not known um, still. It's boring. Um, but recently, there's been a lot of progress on um, on understanding this. So, but uh, recent pro uh, recently. Uh, big progress. So in this case, uh, just to illustrate, so the, or the orders of the groups are, not, are all known. So orders are not. Um, and this is work of Antu, uh, Krause, and Nicholas. Um, last year. Um, okay, and I want to give some, like, just a very vague sense of where this, where did some, some of the theoretical ideas that go into allowing this progress. Um, so there's two, I mean, highlight two kind of tools that are, are useful um, in attacking these K groups in general. So one is um, trying to build some analog of the spectral sequence. And in this setting, for reasons I, well, come into it's it's they're called motivic spectral sequences. That's the motivic filtration of the title. Um, so this is supposed to be some analog of this uh, spectral sequence that comes from bot periodicity, and uh, it's supposed to be some kind of local to global thing again. But um, setting it up and understanding what the right no notion of cohomology is in the setting is much more uh, intricate for us. Okay, so um, that's one. That's one type. So developing these types of tools has been um, one of uh, has been a lot of work in this area. And then another tool is um, a certain map called a, a trace map from these K groups to another invariant called the topological functional homology. So let me not um, let me not define this. It's just it's some other invariant which receives a map, and it's been. Um, it's been, it gives you a lot, it, it's a good tool for getting information about, uh, about this side. And uh, so, um, but, so what I want to point out now is um, this work of uh, Rob Mara Schultz uh, um, from 2018. And they, they sort of, they explained um, how to kind of combine these two tools. So uh, they combine these two. Meaning they give some type of motivic spectral sequence for this for this side of the story for these topological actual homology invariants, and um, it's it's exactly the, uh, that type of spectral sequence and an explicit understanding of the notion of cohomology that's going on there that uh, allowed this, uh, for example, this recent work on um, K theory of Z mod four or Z mod P to the n. Okay, and uh, again, it's so as I said, it's supposed to be some kind of a local to global picture. That's what their thing is too. And their idea is that uh, you should take your, you should, um, so an idea, one of the main ideas is that uh, you can find um, a cover of your ring R. So you can map your ring R to some other ring S in and some huge ring S in general. You started with some small thing, it's maybe some huge thing um, such that uh, 
these groups, THH star of S, uh, are concentrated in even degrees. Okay, so that's sort of shares a little bit of the features of Bob periodicity. It's not periodic, but at least um, it's concentrated in even degrees. And, and they use these covers and sort of this local to global idea in order to get this spectral sequence. All right, uh, and then the last thing I'll say is, so in some recent, or, yeah, some recent work with uh, Jeremy Hahn, uh, who's through the semester, and uh, Dylan Wilson, um, we give a different construction. Um, of the uh, Marshall's uh, sorry, special sequence. Okay, it's quite, it's sort of pretty different in nature, and to give an idea about it, let me note that uh, k star of r and thh of r, um, these arise, these graded abelian groups, they arise really as the homotopy groups of a space, I'll write k of r, and so these are really by definition, they arise as the homotopy groups of a space. Um, those spaces are equipped with a lot of nice structure, so um, where these spaces are uh, what are called uh, infinity rings or commutative ring spectra, um, as Alan was talking about a couple of days ago. Um, so it's some kind of it's a space with some kind of ring structure, commutative ring structure on it, and some homotopy coherence sets. Um, all right, and our idea is uh, so our what we show is um, the cover. Uh, and recover this, these spectral sequences from the following idea. Just consider all maps of the infinity rings from THH of R to E, where E is an E infinity ring. So that's some kind of space where uh, its homotopy groups are concentrated in even degrees. And by recover, I mean there's some very formal process. You, you consider all these things and you do something very formal, and then we show that. Um, there's a very formal construction by considering these things, and we show that you end up with the same spectral sequence that, uh, that Butler and Schultz did. Um, okay, and so maybe I'll note that this is it's it's so formal that you can apply it all the time. Um, so, for example, you could apply it. Uh, you could apply this idea to the initial infinity ring, the sphere spectrum, which I also discussed if you were there, and uh, you get an, a spectral sequence which is not part of this story, but it's. A part of an uh, older story, it's um, you get the Adams Novikov spectral sequence, one of the basic building blocks of genetic homotopy theory. Um, so, somehow this construction. Uh, is Z mod four something special that you know all the orders, or are there other examples of non field finite rings for which? Yeah, you... uh, I, I don't. I just checked their announcement and I read the first example that they give, and okay. I don't know if there are, there are some examples where they yeah. So they get a lot of information. I don't know if there's other examples where they have all the orders, but yeah, I just checked it. So the, the number. So the groups are concentrated in odd degrees if you are high enough. Right. So that's yeah. Do you remember how high? I don't remember how high. But it's I think maybe like above like 32 or something. It's not that high. What is your R allowed to be in your result? Uh, so uh, right. So th this work, um, so I'm, I'm that result was about comparing to this work. And this work was about, about basically P complete discrete commutative rings, or maybe with some quasi-syntomic type. About this, and um, yes, our, the result I was alluding to is that this construction gives the same thing under those hypotheses. And then the other thing I'm alluding to is that maybe this is a good idea in, in broader generality as well. Sure. Are you allowed to plug in non commutative things? Uh, so, I, oh, yeah, so there's somewhat non commutative. So, I mean, in, in our set, in our work, no, because you need this thing to be an infinity ring. So, but there's recent work by Piotr Strzegowski, and he sort of weakens the commutativity assumptions that you need to put the construction. But you still need some commutativity. You need an e-Turing to put an into. 
In this argument, do you need to know there's sufficiently many such the infinity rings? Yes. So the idea is to somehow um, do descent on this thing, and like we have, we showed that there's some kind of nice cover um, in a good class of examples. You have to produce some cover, good cover by something. Other questions? Sorry, uh, if you run this for THHFRSL, so like in the BMS setup, like are there covers you would use that are not THHFS? Yeah, so like Jeremy and Dylan, they like doing like R relative to MU or, or, or in some uh -huh. cases, or or like um, there's other example, like the uh, Lu Wang paper, that's a that's gives a different example where you work relative to, uh, like you do, if you're working about other, uh, ZP, then you can work relative to S adjoint X instead. Oh, good. Yes, all the examples I know are rel at least relative to each. Okay. Thank you.